You want to start this year with a fast. Maybe you're part of a church who is fasting right now. But do we know what fasting is all about? Is that something Christians should still be doing today? How do we do it? Today, we want to explore all these questions and more. What is up, everyone? If we are just meeting, my name is Reynaldo with Vine Media. We desire to help people grow in Jesus. We make weekly videos and would love if you subscribed and followed us if you find any value in our content. Now, let's jump into our topic for today, which is all about fasting. If you're involved in a church, you probably know the general sense of fasting, and you probably have even gotten involved in a fast, especially at the beginning of each year. But just because it's somewhat familiar doesn't mean that people know the depth of what fasting is all about. Biblical fasting is found in both the Old and New Testaments, and in its most basic definition, it is abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. Scripture is clear, and we learn from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount that fasting is never to be entered into for pompous or showy reasons, which means our approach to fasting matters. Biblical fasting is also more than just abstaining from food. People fast in other religions. People fast for medical purposes or for a diet. For Christ followers, it is much more than just losing weight. It is about focusing our attention on God. I like how John Piper put it. He said, fasting is a way of saying with our stomach and our whole body how much we need and want and trust Jesus. So if our approach matters in fasting, what reason should we have in our approach to fasting? For that, we can go to scripture to guide us. Moses fasted before receiving the Ten Commandments. Daniel fasted and prayed to understand a vision. David fasted in mourning of the loss of his son and best friend. Jesus fasted in the wilderness right before stepping into his public ministry. The early church in Acts and beyond fasted before appointing leaders and elders and also when enduring trials. So what motivations are good for fasting? If you want to simply get deeper intimacy with Jesus, fast. If you need guidance, fast. If you desire to die more to yourself, fast. If you are in a season of repentance, fast. If you're about to walk out into ministry, fast. If you need to seek God for direction in your life, fast. If you're enduring a tough or strenuous season, then fast. Pretty much, there is always a reason to fast, and we should incorporate fasting into our spiritual rhythms and our spiritual practices. So the next question becomes, what type of fast do I do? What is the right practical way to fast? So in scripture, there's a few different things. There's something called a partial fast. And this is what we know as the Daniel fast, where you abstain not from all food, but from a select portion of foods. Then there's something called a complete fast, and this is a water-only fast for an extended period of time. Then there's something called an absolute fast. This is no food and no water. Side note, an absolute fast should be undertaken with great care and only under the guidance of a physician. The other question that many people ask is how long do I fast? Here's the deal with that. The Bible gives us many different examples. Judges 20 shows that the Israelite army fasted until the evening. Esther shows us a three-day fast. Daniel shows us a 21-day fast. Jesus shows us in Matthew 
a 40 day fast. And there are also some examples of unspecified lengths for fast. So the length is not specified in scripture, fast this many days. But if you are fasting with your church, journey alongside your brothers and sisters for the entirety of the set fast. If you're fasting on your own, seek God and start somewhere. Here's the deal. Fasting isn't easy. And if you're simply skipping a meal and calling it fasting, I would challenge you to step up the sacrificial side of this spiritual practice. But at the same time, I don't want you to jump into a 40 day fast. Start somewhere and give yourself time to grow. So let's wrap this up with four practical tips for fasting. First, start slow. Maybe fast breakfast and lunch and you only eat dinner. That allows you time to grow. Second, plan your time. Meaning, if you are fasting, don't just take a nap during your lunch break, but use that time to pray or read scripture and actually grow in intimacy with Christ. Remember, you can pray without fasting, but you cannot and should not fast without prayer. Prayer and your time with God are extremely important when it comes to fasting. Third tip, use your hunger or cravings as prompts to pray. You will be hungry, your stomach will growl, and you will be daydreaming about your favorite fast food places. Your coworker will bring donuts for the whole office. It's going to happen. Use those moments as a reminder to connect with God. Fourth tip, consider an alternate fast. Now, I do believe that fasting in the context of food is extremely important, beneficial, and biblical, but you could also do an alternate fast. And this could consist of fasting from social media, or fasting from the TV, or, or movies, or games. That is also honorable. The other option would be doing a partial food fast and adding these alternate fasting ideas, which is my favorite thing to do. And so that's skipping breakfast and lunch, only eating dinner, and also not going on social media for the day. These are great additions to do while you're fasting that will center you and move your focus, attention, and gaze on God. Well, there you have it. Remember that Christian biblical fasting is not about beating our body up, but it is about saying to God, I love you and I need you more than blank. Are any of you fasting right now in this season? Let us know in the comments below. What type of fast are you doing? For how long? Let's pray with one another and connect with one another. And don't forget to connect with our other videos on scripture and prayer. And remember that we release videos every week. Good luck on your fast. Lay before Jesus everything on your heart. And we will see you next time.